Hello everyone, and thank you for being here today. I'm pleased to present a comprehensive overview of the ICH-Q1 Stability Guideline Revision, officially advancing through the ICH process in 2025. This revised guideline marks a significant step forward in harmonizing and modernizing how we evaluate the stability of drug substances and products across various regulatory landscapes. Let's begin with the rationale behind this revision. Historically, ICH-Q1A through Q1F and Q5C functioned as individual documents, often leading to fragmented interpretations. The ICH recognized this and consolidated them into a unified ICH-Q1 guideline. This revision aims to eliminate inconsistencies, address modern product types like advanced therapies, and introduce risk-based and science-driven methodologies. It ensures a harmonized, modern approach globally. This initiative started with the endorsement of the concept paper and business plan in November 2022. By March 2025, we achieved Step 1 sign-off. Then, in April, the Step 2 draft guideline was released for public consultation. We're now moving toward the close of the consultation period in September 2025, after which the finalization and adoption steps will follow. What's new in this version? The revised ICH Q1 integrates life cycle-based stability management, aligned with the pharmaceutical quality system principles. It expands applicability to biologics, oligonucleotides, peptides, and ATMPs. The structure has been modernized with a core guideline and detailed annexes, allowing targeted guidance for specific product types. Annex 3 is dedicated to ATMPs, including gene therapies, cell therapies, and genome editing products. These products require specialized stability considerations, such as cryopreservation, freeze-thaw cycles, and maintenance of viability. This annex offers bespoke guidance, setting it apart from conventional biologics-focused protocols. Annex 2 introduces scientifically justified stability modeling. It covers linear regression for shelf life prediction, batch combining methods, and scale transformations. The guideline introduces scenarios of through E to help regulators and industry address statistical variance under different stability conditions. It allows thoughtful extrapolation, provided data supports it. This section consolidates content from previous Q1 guidelines and Q5C. It clarifies the distinction between forced photo degradation and confirmatory photostability studies. Moreover, it formally introduces in-use and short-term excursion testing, essential for real-world storage and transport scenarios. These changes support stronger, risk-aware labeling decisions. The glossary has been thoroughly updated. Terms like stability indicating CQAs, shelf life, and retest period are clearly defined. There's also clarity on container types, batch selection for multiple sites, and frequency of testing. This ensures uniform understanding and eliminates ambiguity in regulatory filings. Finally, what does this mean for stakeholders? Greater global regulatory alignment, streamlined submissions, and support for novel and platform-based product development. The guideline supports more efficient lifecycle management, minimizing waste and redundancy. After step four, Training modules and case studies will further ease implementation. The ICHQ1 revision reflects the scientific, regulatory, and technological progress in our industry. It provides clarity, flexibility, and scientific robustness. Thank you for your attention. I look forward to your questions and the discussion ahead.